Welcome back to another episode of Stan's Fam. As you can see here, we got two nice lobsters. Sarah went out today with Kelly Young and her brother. They got uh, nine lobsters and season ends in a couple days. So these are the last lobsters of the year for us. In this video, we got a lot of stuff going on. We changed the oil on the new boat for the first time. We got the bottom painted and we got a new grill outside. We got the new Traeger and it's got some great new features. So we're gonna show you that. But first, I wanna thank Omaze for sponsoring this video. Go to amaze.com slash stansfam. It's a gorgeous day, a couple days left of lobster season, so we had to come out here and try to catch a couple more. Getting ready to jump in. Look how crystal clear the water is. There's our ledge down there. We got Kelly Young. We got sandwiches. We got sandwiches. <laughs> we got our wetsuits on because it's cold and we're wimps. It's like the water temperature is 76 degrees, so borderline comfort for us. Borderline. Borderline. <laughs> We're wusses. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to jump in. I think there'll be a couple laps there. We'll see. End of season is kind of hard sometimes, but jump in and see what there is to see. So stay tuned. They're hard at this spot. They're smart. We'll get right back to lobstering, but here's a little bit more about Omaze. Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating money to chosen charities all across the world. Their sustainable approach to fundraising means that nonprofits can spend less time and money raising funds and instead focus on serving the needs of their communities. Enter for your chance to win an incredible Mercedes-Benz 4x4 Sprinter van to live out that van life dream. Our friends at Vansmith will give you a Sprinter and $80,000 conversion so you can enjoy a fully converted interior and your choice of exterior upgrades, like a bike rack, all-terrain tires for all those off-road adventures. To add to this amazing prize, your Sprinter is also sustainable. It has a rooftop solar panels to power everything from the fridge to interior lights. You'll get Vansmith's green package, which includes all natural build materials and a carbon offset package to fund environmental repair programs. The maximum seating is two, plus beds and any other customizations. Powertrain 3.0 liter turbo V6 diesel, a seven speed automatic transmission, and a four x four drivetrain. The charity is the Micro Works Foundation. The Micro Works Foundation is on a mission to help close the skills gap by challenging the stigmas and stereotypes that discourage people from pursuing the millions of available jobs. Your donations will help support their work ethic scholarship program, which awards future tradespeople who will work smart and hard. For your chance to win a Sprinter van and support the Micro Works Foundation, it's a great cause. Go to amaze.com slash stansfam. Alright y'all, we are emptying out a bag of lobster. Sarah is truly a bad A double S when it comes to lobster diving. I she love knows lobster. what she's doing. <laughs> I thought there would be a couple on the spot, but there was a couple more than a couple, so. A couple more than a couple, <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna get off this boat now. No, I know, I'm gonna put it down here. <laughs> so, before we put them in the live well, we're gonna go ahead and re-measure them just to make sure. What do we do? This one's borderline. 
And he might have been, he looked like he was a keeper in the water, but he's not a keeper on the boat. So. He shrugged just like, oh, he's yeah. cold. He's cold. <laughs> he was, I mean, he honestly could have been legal, have been, but, we, but have we have enough and I will catch him next year. No. I don't want the struggle. That's why they're called Florida Spiny Lobster. El Spagna. How many do we have? I think nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Came out a little bit deeper, 25 feet deep. The water feels warmer though. <laughs> We're not just sure if it is or not. We're trying to make ourselves feel better. We're gonna jump in with spear guns here. We got our guns. We need some some fish to go with our lobster. So nice little spot here, some rocks on the bottom. Crystal clear water today. It's getting calmer too. The weather's getting really nice. So we'll see what we catch. Take a look at this black grouper, had it been in season. Kelly and I, our jaws were just like hanging open when we saw this thing. It was just chilling on top of this piece of coral. Like, it, he knew it was, season was closed. He knew it, he must have. Good size have one. A <laughs> you could have shot that so easily. God. Oh man. I was just gonna go take a video of him. <laughs> that thing was big. Yeah. He's just chilling. Yeah. We did not spear anything. We could have speared lots of things, but they were mostly out of season. <laughs> Everything we saw. And we're back at the marina. Gorgeous afternoon. We've got a handful of lobsters, enough for dinner. Jumped in the water to spear fish. Didn't spear anything, but it was still really pretty to swim around. We got a whole mess to clean up. Kelly's over there cleaning up the lobsters. Got some gas on the boat, gonna wash it down. And that's the end of lobster season for us until August. Now we're gonna cook a lobster on the Traeger. Of course, we have to cook it. Okay, see that? That's the new Traeger, just came out. Super excited. I don't know all the features it has yet, but it's the new Timberline. And uh, I'll tell you one thing I'm excited about right here is the new induction top. It goes on the side of it, I believe. and. Uh, I can see a reverser and some uh, stakes in there to finish them off. We got wheels we got to put on it. We got all sorts of accessories with it. Wireless meat probes and stuff like that. So uh, definitely going to be cooking good here. Check it out though. New style, new shape. Hopper over here where all the pellets go. Got your uh, 
readout right there, digital stuff. A little different shape here on the setup. Get your racks in here, ribs, chicken, fish, steak. We'll be cooking it all here. Cooking in paradise, I like to say. Sadie, help a mama. This thing bed. is a spaceship. It's a spaceship. That's how yeah. we do it. <laughs> Beautiful piece of machinery, though. Can't wait to cook something on it. Who put this together? Me. I always put the Traeger grills together. <laughs> you grew up in a hardware store. I'm good at it. It's like giant and life-size Tinker Toys. There you go. <laughs> What do you it think? is it's a cool grill. It is a little daunting though when when you get a Traeger, it comes on like a pallet with tons of pieces and it's scary looking, but they make it really easy. They give you good instruction manuals and you can even scan the code and get it on your phone and do it that way too. So, good little toolkit they give you to set everything up. So, it's user-friendly and easy to set up the grills. Even though it looks scary, don't be scared. If I can do it, so can you. <laughs> so, there are a couple of cool features with this grill. They give you these wood pieces this time. It's just a magnet, but it looks nice. It goes on top here, but you can pull it off. <laughs> That's strong. Yeah, it is strong. Just just a nice feature. It looks nice, classy. A couple other uh, wood pieces down there, wood shelves. You can put your tools in, little hang hangers for your tools. It's pretty cool. Other little storage bins down here. This is the new bucket dripper thing, so that goes up in there. Catches all your stuff. I still have to figure out how to lock that in. Almost done. And then they give you a little, some pellets in there, or paper towels, whatever, storage bin stuff. Cool. And uh, we're gonna try out the induction burner, which looks like fun. So we can put a cast iron pan on that, heat it up really hot, cook your steak, and then, what do you call it? Reverse sear. Reverse sear. Put it on your cast iron. I always get mad because Nick does it in the kitchen with the cast iron and grease goes every, it's just, it's really messy to try to like sear something inside. So this will be nice because it's outside. What's going on everyone? We're pulling the boat out. We got to change the oil. Break in period here. We've got the trailer here. Sarah's coming up there behind me. You can see that. This is our first time driving the new trailer for the X3. Had some fun already. Been out a few times on it. Caught some great fish. But it's time to haul it out. We're gonna get the bottom painted. We're gonna change the oil, do a few more things. So we're gonna take you along the way and uh, show you another part of boat ownership I wanna take. So that's the first time we've actually put this boat on the trailer ourselves. It's blown out of the north today about 15 to 20 knots. It was only supposed to be 10 or 12. And it's picking up this weekend. We actually canceled our swordfish trip because the weather is supposed to be 20, 25 for the weekend. And we can't control the weather. Sometimes we lose out on was, trips. That was kind of tricky. The boat was going side. Oh yeah, we got wind blowing across. So we got all that. It's high tide too. So that's kind of a pain here. And all these dinghies. Oh, we got dinghies here for sure. We had a fan yelling, so he loved the boat. That was awesome. Not sure who it was, but thank you. So here we go. She's out. We're gonna go do bottom paint. We're doing Micron 66 again from Interlux. But we got a scum line there, you can see it. And we're gonna go up just probably two inches above that. And we'll paint this whole thing. Now you may not really wanna bottom paint a boat if you don't have to, but this boat lives in the water, so we don't want the growth on it. So we're gonna bottom paint it. It's not on the trailer very often, but. We got the scum line there, Mark. You can see all that pretty good. And uh, we'll probably get some wax on it and go from there. But there's the hull. You know, you guys didn't really get to see that as much before. But that's what it looks like from the back. So it's kind of cool looking. You're going to make a cameo, buddy. Oh, good one, Hudson. You've been watching the videos? Oh, yeah. It's the only reason why we're down here. What's, sure. what's her name? <laughs> this is Hudson. Hudson? All right, you guys, Hudson just walked up, and what's your name? Chris. Hudson and Chris have been watching the videos. Yeah. I like the shirt. <laughs> there you go. I like the boat. How is it? Thank you. It's awesome. We're going to bottom pan now and uh, do our first engine oil service on it, the 20 hour service.
Look who it is. Andrew, you're going to come help me wax and wash the boat off? Absolutely. Are you That's bored? <laughs> Don't worry, that's just our internet cable up there. You're good. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. How you doing? Good Andrew job. Andrew said he didn't hit anything. Yes. <laughs> Andrew said he'd help me wax it. He did? Nice job, man. Wow. What a beauty. Oh hey, happy birthday too. Sorry, I missed that. Bit. Thank <laughs> you. Are you thirty now? Thirty seven. Oh, Thirty seven years old yesterday. I think when you get older you quit counting them. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I promised Andrew we'd take him for a ride, but he had company in town and we were all busy, so now he could just sit on the boat in the yard and we'll spray him with the hose. <laughs> Here we go. Get this puppy up. Ugh. Need a bigger truck. <laughs> Need a bigger truck, you have to crank it up more. <laughs> all right, we're gonna do some maintenance, oil change. We gotta put the FL numbers on it some other odds and ends, so we'll check back later. So we probably could have left the boat in the water longer to get a better bottom line on it, you know, scum line they call it. But you can see on here, decent where it's at. We're gonna have the bottom bank come up really close to there, because you can see that's where that sits in the water. We need a couple inches to spare. And then as it runs forward, it'll come up here. And we're just making a couple little marks on there to see. We want a black bottom paint down in this area here. That'll just help them be a guide since the lines aren't as easy to see as normal. I'm gonna go get the oil, we'll do the lower unit, and then we'll do the main oil on the motor and uh, we'll be good to go. So, we'll show you guys the before and finished product. Sarah's putting the FL numbers on. Making it legal. Oil change time, 20 hour service. We're just a couple hours over that, but gonna do the gear lube in the lower unit there, the main oil, got a new filter here, and uh, Time to get working. How many oil change videos have you done on YouTube? A few. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna change the oil on the new Yamaha 300 on the boat. After all, I showed Nick how to change oil on his engines way back in the day to begin with, so. Hooray! Yay! And since it's your boat, you should definitely change the oil. I'll change it. And wax it. All day long. Let's do it. Let's take the cowling off and look at what is underneath, just because I'm up here already. This cowling's gonna be as big as you. Yeah, I don't know. This is where short people problems. <laughs> is it unlocked? Looks like it. Oh, you're a professional. Don't put that on my head. Oh, wow, so shiny, look at this so engine. Damn. This is a brand new Yamaha 300 four stroke engine. And it is nice and shiny and beautiful. <laughs> brand new. It's got 25 hours on it. The cowling does a really good job. Like, there's not a splash of salt in here. So, all right, we're going to start with the lower unit first. So, there's just a couple screws in here we have to loosen. So we'll take out the bottom screw first. So that looks pretty, pretty good. You don't want to see a lot of metal shavings on that. A little bit is normal, but there's not a lot. So that's normal. We're going to replace that O-ring. Very important to not lose this screw. All right, so then we're gonna loosen this one and the oil will come flowing out as that one releases the pressure. The screws were tight, huh? Yeah, the screws were not coming out. Here it comes. Well, it looks like new. It is new. Oh, don't lose your screws. <laughs> Water in there, no dirt, looks brand new. It's brand new. It's only got 25 hours on it, but the idea is that if you're gonna find a problem, you should do it now at 25 hours before you put more hours on your engine. So Yamaha recommends you do your 20 hour initial 
break in oil change just to make sure everything is working properly. All right, the lower unit oil is still draining. So while we're down here, <laughs> we already kind of looked at the bottom of the boat, but I'll just show you again, like how unique the hull is on this boat. A very interesting hull design, but that's why this boat can go so extremely shallow. It's because of all these tunnels that are in it and how it's made. But it's pretty cool to see it out of the water. Nick and I hadn't seen it on the trailer until we put it on the trailer like yesterday and we just sat there and looked at it for a few minutes. It's so wild looking. It's pretty cool though. The boys who have to bottom paint it are gonna have a job, huh? Oh, it's a good job. <laughs> They're gonna be bottom painting away. Hopefully that thing will work. It's kind of uh, persnickety sometimes, so we might have to bang it, but um, <laughs> we've got the connections just hooked up to the starter on the engine, so we're gonna do it that way. I'm gonna pull the dipstick out. I've already got oil on my foot and on the boat from this thing. And we stick this in the dipstick hole so it goes all the way down to the oil reservoir. I'm gonna turn on the pump, see if it works. And it's gonna suck all the oil out. Shady Lady gave us that one. Thank you, Kyle. We're still using it. Definitely recommend some cardboard. Some paper towels handy because oil gets everywhere. So all that pumps, I'm just going to go downstairs and hook up the pump to the lower unit and we'll put the fresh lower unit oil back in there. So we're trying to do everything at the same time because it'll go faster if we just keep moving. Oh. Hey, a little rusty. This was mine. I bought this for my boat. Glad to see it's still working though. All right, so we just screw this in here. Oh no, a different size screw now. That's good, phew. There's fresh lower unit oil in there. You know, it doesn't look nice, but it is nice fresh, right? It's new. Oh, it's new. <laughs> so we're gonna pump the lower unit oil in here and fill it up. So we let it run a little bit to get all the bubbles out. Looks like honey. You put some Don't on your put some on your oatmeal. Don't eat it. The new O-rings. I skipped an important step. You have to put the, the top screw back in or else it all just falls out. Got a fresh O-ring on it. Tighten it. <laughs> if you don't put the top screw back in and you pull this one out like I did, because I haven't done an oil change in a while, all the oil just comes falling back out again. So you have to put your top screw in first. So on these new 300s, you have to pull off both screens. There's a screen up top for the one bolt, and then there's one on the bottom too. that hard to do this it's just a little tedious but if you have like that that thing is a game changer that pump and I got this off of Amazon I think it was like it's a car filter but some fancy sports car or something <laughs> piece 
think it costs a lot of money. Oh, Ferrari. Look, it's got the little Ferrari emblem on it or something. It's a Ferrari filter rim. New genuine Yamaha filter. If it has an O ring on it, we just want to get a little bit of fresh lube. We lube up our O ring so it stays moist. Fresh oil. Ah, oh, smells like burnt oil. All right, this is fresh. Nick gets his oil by the drum. So we just dip some out of the drum at the marina, but this is fresh new, new oil we're gonna put in here. Steady. <laughs> this is kind of a bad angle. <laughs> there, let's check the stick. We're going to check the stick. See what the level is. Low. We yeah. need more. A little bit more. <laughs> oh, we got some more oil right there. And there's none in the filter yet because we're not going to start the engine or anything, so we probably want to put in a little extra. Better. Yeah, so we'll wipe it up one more time. We'll dip it just to be safe. We'll be good. It looks good to me. After we run the boat, if we wanted to, we could check it again because the filter has to fill up and everything. And we could put a, another half quart in or something if we want to, but it should be fine. Well, there you have it. Lower and upper unit main oil change. First time on the new boat. I haven't, I haven't actually done a 300 horsepower one. I've done the 350s and like 250s and they're all similar, but I will say 300 this 300 engine is super easy. Yamaha has it laid out really great where the filter's just right there. Everything you can get to. Very user friendly. Do your maintenance and take care of your engine and it will take care of you. Is my philosophy. This engine has a really, <laughs> like when, when, you, when you fire it up, it has a nice sound to it too. It sounds like, I don't know, Detroit diesel engine or something. Rah! Good job. Not bad at all. Oil. <laughs> now we clean up a little bit. It happens. I mean, there's, I don't think there's, there's no such thing as an oil change without getting oil on your boat. So clean up after. Hi, close? Close. Gotta go upstairs. You gotta go get the key. Oh, no. I locked it. This locks child proof. It works. It's supposed to be thief proof. I hope so. Okay. Yeah, I think you'll have to readjust. Yeah. Close. We made it. We're on. Pull this thing up here. It's in there. They're all different. We're in. Time to go to the boat yard. I think I left the ladder down. Always make sure your ladder's up before you move the boat anywhere. <laughs> it probably be fine. Yeah. That was the last thing on my mental checklist. It definitely went nowhere. All right, we got straps. How much is it? 
much room was there? Six inches. <laughs> Our internet cable. Very close. Watch out, the tree. Good. <laughs> Go get him, Sassy. We made it. Now we're just gonna find out where to park it. This is not your normal. He told me that. Yeah, it's beautiful. How are you guys doing? You're in charge of the bottom painting. That's right. We're gonna make sure she's beautiful by the time she leaves. Oh yeah. So as you can see, the X3 has got bottom paint on it, and it was Micron 66 from Interlux. Just a proven uh, paint that we've used for years, and we love it, so she's good to go. It looks pretty sharp. On dry, good to go. Took a few extra days, some weather delays. It's kind of windy and cloudy raining again today, but uh, last week got delayed a few days. So it's ready for action, though. We got stone crabs to catch, we got fish to catch. Sassy's ready to go back out there. Look at this. <laughs> it's gonna like blow a gale and rain on me. Oh, it's stormy today. Black paint looks good though. Oh yeah. Alrighty. We're gonna get launched back in the water and uh, we'll see you guys back there at Bud and Mary's once we get it rolling. Straps are on. Straps are on. We smelled something funny, you guys. Rotten swordfish bait. I forgot two mahi bellies back here. Sarah, will you dump these out? Oof, gosh, that stinks. Yeah. That's disgusting. Here we go. It's raining. And the ramp is busy. We're waiting on our turn. Oh, our turn. Yay! Here we go. This is the nastiest day. It's like cold and windy. Whoever left this jacket on Nick's boat, thank you. All righty. You ready? Yeah. All good? Back up a little bit more? I can, yeah. You're off. All right, we'll see you back at the marina. So we didn't spray the motor with corrosion block in the yard, but as soon as we got it back in the water, we did. And uh, you just want to protect it. That's from blaster there. We want to keep the motor in good shape. We want to have it for a few years. And uh, just every 100 hours when we do the service now, we'll always spray it with some more corrosion block. As you can see, we got two nice lobster here. And season ends in a couple days. So Sarah went out today with Kelly Young. They got nine keeper lobsters and uh, here comes Claire. I'm gonna do one uh, citrus style. I got lemon olive oil, some Florida sunshine seasoning that we're gonna put a little pineapple on it. Sarah's, we're gonna put butter on it with some garlic. All right, so lobster one is for Sarah. She's getting the butter and garlic. We're just gonna cut it all up in here. You can see inside the head meat, inside the head there, there's a lot of meat up in there. And we never really used to eat lobster this way. All the garlic's in there. Oh, well, the garlic's in there. <laughs> there's all the garlic in there. We're gonna hit this one now with some lemon olive oil, some seasoning right here. And all that head meat, you know, we always ring the tails, you don't get it. And I bet there's at least 15% more meat in there, so keep that in mind if you guys are doing this. But we're gonna throw the pineapple on there after it's been on the grill for a few minutes. Um, I'm not gonna put on there the whole time, so let's go throw them on the grill and see how it turned out. Check these bad boys out. It's time to get cooking. Oof, here we go. Right on there like that. 
we want to try to get them cooked evenly, so we're going to open them on up there. Probably give them about 15 minutes or so, and then come back and check them. We're at 460 degrees. There they're too cold. Just a little bit of pineapple sliced up there. For my lobster right here, I'm just giving it a little bit of juice here, and a little bit of island style. So probably just got to give them a few more minutes. You can see that lobster still got a little color on the shell, but I think five more minutes of most was done. They look good and they smell good, guys. And Claire is a terror. This looks good to me. Let's see if Claire likes it. Just trying to get a little piece of paper. There we go. Here, Claire. Oh, you want some lobster? Smoky, smoky, last day of the season lobster, always tastes good. It's my turn. Sarah's lobster didn't come out of shell that easy, but I barely stuck the knife in this one. Oh. And it is pulling out so easy. Pineapple, lemon, olive oil. Look at it falling apart. Yeah, you got lucky. Mine's like, I can't even get it out. I'm gonna have to Super it. soft and tender. <laughs> the pineapple's falling off. Great smoke flavor. Honestly, probably one of the softest lobsters I've ever had. Claire. <clears throat> like the meat is so tender, you guys. And it's coming right out of the shell. Like Sarah's would barely come out. <laughs> Mine won't come out at all. And Watch this. This is one of the softest, like most tender lobsters, I've, the most I've ever had. 100%. Just coming out. I mean, putting a fork in there and coming out in big old chunks. So can't beat it. I think this is one of the best lobsters I've ever had. Super soft, tender, juicy, smoky, pineapple flavor, a little bit of lemon on it, seasoning. Definitely try it if you guys haven't. That was the first time I ever put pineapple on it, so it was a good, uh, a good little add-on. But all videos gotta come to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Fresh bottom paint on the new boat, fresh oil in the motor. Sarah and Kelly caught the lobsters. I wanna thank Omaze for sponsoring the video. Go check it on out, omaze.com slash stansfam. And, uh, you know, enter for a chance to win. So we'll see you guys next time. Hit that like button, make sure to subscribe. That's all we got for you. Hey, we need a name for the grill. Our old grill's name was Smokey. Smokey. <laughs> so this is a new grill. Leave your comments below and help us name the grill.